Let's look at the reactions of acid halides, our most reactive functional group of the carboxylic acid derivatives. And so in general, these reactions are going to be able to react with good anionic nucleophiles and weaker protonated nucleophiles without having to activate the carbonyl um, with a Lewis acid or a Bronsted acid. Okay, so in general, we'll see the line reactions are going to follow those two um, outlines as we see there. And so if we use an anionic nucleophile, we'll just get chloride back as a byproduct. Um, and then we'll get HCl as a byproduct net if we have a protonated nucleophile. Okay. And so in general, in practice, if you're using these for synthesis, they're very exothermic in reaction and you've got to control the temperature things can get away from you uh, using acid halides, typically used as soon as prepared. Uh, let's look at why they're the most reactive group um, in this series of carboxylic acid derivatives and it's because they have the best leaving group, uh, the most stable leaving group. The conjugate acid of bromide and chloride um, is stronger than the conjugate acid of any of our other carboxylic acid derivatives and so the conjugate base is more stable making it a more reactive carbonyl. And so for direct nucleophilic attack, you see that leaving group will be bromide and chloride. We don't need acid activation um, for these, so we won't have a protonated leaving group uh, for these three uh, functional groups, the acid bromides, the acid chlorides, which we're talking about here. And then the anhydrides are also active enough to react without activation. So we'll only see a direct nucleophilic attack uh, for those. As we're looking at our other derivatives, um, esters and then carboxylic acids are next in reactivity. They eliminate alkoxides and hydroxide by direct nucleophilic attack, alcohols and water if we protonate first with acid activation. And then we get um, even less reactive with amides and nitriles where we see um, uh, the amide ion is, is eliminated with direct nucleophilic attack. So that's going to require a lot of heat to push that reaction along. In acid conditions, we eliminate ammonia, which is quickly converted to ammonium. With nitriles, we won't see a direct nucleophilic attack in our reactions. There are ways um, to do that with higher order catalysts and whatnot but beyond our scope. But what we're going to see is acid activation and, and heating for uh, nitrile hydrolysis. And that leaving group will be NH3, again, quickly protonated to ammonia. And then we'll see carboxylates um, have the negative charge that repels nucleophiles. We typically won't see those react in carbonyl additions re uh, reactions to this carbon. Um, just throwing that out there as kind of the far end of the reactivity scale to the low end for these derivatives. Okay, But we can use the carboxylate ion as a nucleophile. Um, to form our acid halides. And so we'll see thionyl chloride, any one of our decomposing reagents, oxyl chloride works as well. Um, and so we'll see that be able to form our acid halides. Uh, the decomposition reaction here drives this along. And so uh, I'll do this mechanism in a later video on carboxylic acids. We can also use PCL3 uh, or PBR3 if we want the acid bromide um, to make acid halides. So in a line reaction, we'd want to see um, the carboxylate, PCL3, and heat as being required for forming these uh, very reactive compounds. All right, so let's look at what these um, acyl halides or acid halides are used to make. And so we can react them with a strong nucleophile like a, an alkoxide to make an ester. And so the mechanism would look like this our strong nucleophile, whatever it might be, would then add directly to the carbonyl, kick up a um, pi bond there onto oxygen as a negative formal charge. And so as we look forward here to our tetrahedral intermediate, these compounds typically form a tetrahedral intermediate um, as the key intermediate leading to the final product. We look and see, well, what's the best leaving group on this um, complex? And it is clearly the chlorine. And so that carbonyl reforms here. 
kicks off the leaving group like we saw in the example reaction above and we directly form our ester with a byproduct of chloride and again byproducts typically I don't require them but I may ask for them in any particular question but if, if not asked for only the ester product would be needed here okay uh, we can also add a lithium reagent to our, um, our or a granuard or an acetylide an organometallic reagent that is highly nucleophilic so all three of these act as if they are carbanions so they act like even though they technically have covalent character in the carbon metal bond they act like an R group here so um, an alkyl group or an alkenyl or phenyl um, lithium, phenyl, grignard, magnesium bromide, or an acetylide ion, they act as if they are strong nucleophiles with carbon anions, carbanions. And what they do is they will react initially with the acid halide. So if we take our grignard, we could say, we could show the covalent bond. We don't have to. Kicks up to the carbonyl. We could equivalently show um, this addition as the carbanion here adding and kicking up to the tetrahedral intermediate. Well, carbon's a terrible leaving group, and so that group we just added, it's not in danger of getting kicked off. The bromide, however, will be, and it gets kicked off here. And we form a ketone initially. This ketone, while it reacts more slowly um, than an, an acyl halide, it still reacts enough with a second equivalent of Grignard, organolithium, or acetylide reagent um, to give a poor yield of a ketone. And this reaction is better carried out to form a second equivalent here, um, or to react with a second equivalent of Grignard and thereby make another tetrahedral intermediate, which has no leaving group. And so it must be protonated in step two here of the line reaction. We have a second synthetic step where we add um, ammonium chloride here. Aqueous ammonium chloride is fine to make this tertiary alcohol. So any source of hydronium, we could just say H3O plus here, unless I tell you otherwise, um, in class for this protonation step called a workup step to get this uh, tertiary alcohol into a form we can isolate in a SEP funnel in the organic layer. All right, so we protonate there with that acid. The mechanism is just like we saw with acid bases. Hydronium here, H3O plus, caps off that oxygen to make the tertiary alcohol. All right. Now, if we have a Gilman reagent, it's going to couple and not do a carbonyl addition. It has um, very little polarity to the copper carbon bond. And so there's not really an affinity for the delta plus here that's on that carbonyl uh, due to its polarity. And so instead, its affinity is for the carbon bromine bond. And we'll get a coupling to a ketone. And we get a pretty good yield of a ketone with the Gilman reagent. So if we want to stop at the ketone, the Gilman's our option. And if we uh, want to add to the carbonyl, we'll do two additions with a Grignard lithium or acetylide reagent. Again, the coupling reaction with the cuprate, we do not have a mechanism for that. Now, looking at um, our neutral nucleophiles, no acid is needed. And because of the high reactivity of these, and so before we saw alkoxides add, well here we could form um, an ester by adding an alcohol. So this is an, a poor, a weak nucleophile, but it's strong enough to react with our acid halide. And so if we have an alcohol or water here, so this could be water, and if it was water, we would get a carboxylic acid, but here we have an ester, so we're going to add directly here to the carbonyl and form a tetrahedral intermediate. At this point, we look, and there's not much of a difference between the leaving groups. 
And so it's reasonable to think that this first step is reversible as well as the second step here, um, which will be to take a base from solution, probably another solvent molecule, but we won't get specific, and we'll grab that proton, putting a lone pair back onto oxygen, and now we have a clear best leaving group mechanistically, which is the chloride rather than the OR minus. And so this carbonyl will come back down, kick off the good leaving group irreversibly here, and we form our ester and ultimately one equivalent of HBr. With water, like we said a moment ago, uh, we would get a carboxylic acid and that's called hydrolysis of an acyl halide, so HY hydrolysis there. And we could have used hydroxide before instead of water, but that would have been an anionic nucleophile. Um, if we had used hydroxide instead of water, the pH being lower would have given us this carboxylate at the end. <clears throat> instead of just a um, addition there of the acid because it would proton transfer at the end and we would end up with a carboxylate and water um, or um, if we could pH modify it, lower the pH with hydronium as a second step to make sure that carboxylic acid is in its protonated form, okay? But we saw here with our neutral nucleophile, protonated nucleophile, we end up with an equivalent of acid after hydrolysis. Same mechanism as with alcohols, just hydrogen instead of a carbon group on that alcohol. So we just come in and change this carbon group to a proton and that gives us the same mechanism. With amines, it's a little bit different because amines are basic and so we can uh, form primary, secondary, and tertiary amides using this method. And so a tertiary amide would have two carbon groups here, and so we'd have two alkyl groups. So a secondary amine would lead to a tertiary amide. A primary amine would lead to a secondary amide, and then a, um, uh, ammonia as our nucleophile would lead to a primary amide. So let's look at what um, a primary amide would look like if we did this mechanism. And so starting with ammonia, we have a good nucleophile. It's protonated, but amines are typically stronger nucleophiles. And so it kicks up that carbonyl and we end up with a tetrahedral intermediate. Well, this is a uh, acidic um, proton to a certain degree, and so you'd see an amine, another equivalent of amine, could come in and react to take that proton off of our system here. And so this first step is somewhat reversible. Um, the most likely event here for our second tetrahedral intermediate is for the carbonyl to reform, kicking off the chloride leaving group, because now there's a clear winner as to what the best leaving group is. And so we end up with our um, irreversible last step to our primary amide. And the byproduct here is ammonium. So we ended up adding a nitrogen, an equivalent of NH3 in the first step, and then we added, had another equivalent of NH3 remove a proton. It lost its lone pair by doing that, and so we need uh, more than just one equivalent of the amine in order to um, make sure this reaction goes efficiently to completion, and so what we do is we say there are two amine molecules to one acyl halide, or we say um, that we should use excess amine. And so again, to recap this, what we just said 
acyl halides react with excess ammonia uh, to form a primary amide. They react with a primary amine in excess to form a secondary amide such as we see here okay, in skeletal structure we would draw that methyl here and then finally reacts with a secondary amine like diethylamine here again in excess to form a tertiary amine or to me a tertiary amide so primary amide secondary tertiary amide 